But I want to get into St. Pete, right? First race weekend of your season. Finally, you get an IndyCar season, right? You're 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 in the you're in the game now. Uh, you've you've dabbled a little bit, right? You've had a little bit of IndyCar experience, but uh, but not at St. Pete. Um, your squad, the team in general, I would say it was probably a struggle for you guys. You know, all three cars definitely seemed to be a bit of a, a bit of a challenge. But I think for you, you wanted to get in all the laps, uh, figure out what's you know what we're what we're going to expect this season. Uh, did, were you guys expecting a little bit more out of the street course package? What did you What did you think of it overall? Honestly, I, I wasn't even thinking like, oh, you know, what package we're going to have. I was more just like, you know, we got such little preparation before the first race. You do like a day at homestead with three sets of tires. So like you don't really it was more like a shakedown. Then Sebring again, very limited amount of laps and then straight into St. Pete and, you know, our 30 crew, there's a lot of new engineers, new mechanics. So it's a lot of new people working together and we barely had any time to like start gelling. Um, and then going into St. Pete, a track I've never been on. Um, I have very little street racing experience in, in general. And the last time I drove where I raced an in IndyCar on a road course was like six years ago. So I was like, <laughs> man, crazy. I know this weekend's going to be tough. Like, going to be tough but let's just take it step by step so my goal was just like honestly not that i didn't care what package i was like let's just focus on completing all the laps and going into street circuits like in the practice days it's so hard to actually get any clean laps to evolve because you either get stuck in traffic or there's red flags and then you go straight into qualifying so i was like i know that our evolution is going to like the majority of it's going to be in the race because that's the only time you actually get like consecutive running then you put on different tires and you go again. And I was fine at that. That's so why I stayed very calm throughout the weekend. Now, I wasn't really look too much into the results, just looking at the steps I need to take and the confidence level with the car. Because if you compare like street circuits in the US compared to street circuit <laughs> racing like anywhere else, they're not street it's, circuits over there. <laughs> they're right? Not, yeah. not street circuits. Like I yeah. was speaking to my brother who was racing at a street circuit in the same weekend in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> and I'm like, dude. St. T is so bumpy. It's crazy. And he's like, man, we're smooth sailing yeah. here. It's like, this is flat as hell. So um, it's very different. So to find that confidence level and the comfort, it, it, it takes a little bit. You know, it takes some laps just through the amount of bumps that there is, especially under braking and stuff. So that's what I said. I said, let's, let's keep it clean, keep it very simple with strategy, with setup and stuff. And let's just run as many laps as possible and, and evolve throughout the race. I obviously keep pushing myself. And we did that. And then the pace was was good in, in the race, you know, from, from middle to the end. And uh, we, we kept it clean and it was, uh, we, we hit our targets for the first race weekend. Um, but yeah, it was interesting. Yeah, finishing 15th, honestly, in this modern era of IndyCar racing, when you've got 27 full-time cars, uh, that is a, like, you have to be happy with that day. If, if, if it's not the greatest weekend right now, when you when you look back at the season and you're like, hey, 15th, that, those, are, those are points that we need come the end of the year, right? Like, that's, Again, we want to win. We want to be in the top five, top ten, and stuff like that. But nowadays, in the IndyCar series, the NTT IndyCar series, with how difficult it is, with how close it is, you know, you have to be like, all right, for the first race out, we got to be proud of that. We got to be that's something to build on. What do you think was the most difficult part of the track? As like someone who's new to the track, like I, I've I've been racing at St. Pete now since I was like eighteen, so like I'm very used to it. But it's it's a very challenging track, and physically how did you feel after the race because physically i heard a lot of drivers you know it, that's a tough one that's a tough race to start out at it's warm i mean i know I, I several races over the last few years i've had a cooler of water dumped in dumped over me in the middle of the race because it's so hot what did you think of it <laughs> how do you how do you wait how do you even have time to do like that well so we don't take the tear off we, we don't use the tear off we don't pull the tear off so the guy that pulls the tear off instead just dumps water on me it actually works kind of nice no, I'm for sure it does. Like I, I do the same thing, but before I get in the car, and I learned it from endurance racing. If you're able to cool your body ten down, oh, it's huge. Before you get in, it, dude, it's a massive difference. And I'm a person like I sweat a lot, so Me I need too. to be careful with dehydration. So I worked a lot, like in endurance racing, on how to keep myself cool and like make sure I'm not getting cramps and stuff in the race. So that might be a, a good tool literally to just ice bucket, water. boom, you dumped on you, and honestly, it, it felt like, fantastic. Uh, messed up some of the electronics and stuff in the car. There's no risk. 
No, I mean it probably <laughs> is, but I, I I did the same thing with uh, with Meyer Shank last year at Mid Ohio. Last pit stop, I said, "Hey, no tear off. Just pour some water on me. I'm gonna unzip the suit a little bit." And I felt fantastic for the last ten. Bro, it, it makes great. a big difference, man, because yeah. it cools your body temp down. Your body's like overheating. But going back on your question, the toughest thing is think Pete. Um, I'll say first is just getting in rhythm, like consecutive laps. It's so like sometimes so um, scrappy in a way, the session. So it's hard to really get in a, in a rhythm. Um, I'll say gaining the confidence, like in the heavy braking zones to break super late um, and make sure that you're either not going to lock the rear or the front as you're turning in. Because if you do that, you either need a ghost trait or you're like, <laughs> no, I think I'm going to stick with it. And there's a, a good chance you'll hit the wall. And the problem with going straight is like, um, if you cause red flags, uh, the rule is if you cause a red flag in the session in practice, you're not allowed to rejoin. Yes. So if you go straight, you have to make sure that you have enough space to like turn it around you and gotta go. You got to commit to the burnout too. A lot of people you have don't to commit, commit to, to the, the burnout. burnout. You just make sure the car attack. doesn't stall. Yep. Because if the car stalls, there's a red flag and you're done. So it's kind of like, I was going into the practice sessions. I was like, all right, I need a risk, right? To like make sure I feel the car and stuff. But I was like, there's a certain point that if I go too much and I beginning of the session and I cause a red flag or whatever, like I'm done. Then it was like all that work goes to waste. So <laughs> it was just about like, I was. that's why I was like, listen, let's just gain laps and get consistent. We might not have the 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 preparation doing it this way for qualifying, but I was like, it's all right. If I start in the back, I'm gonna have the laps in the race to build up to. It's gonna be traffic, and then we're gonna get clean air, and I'm gonna start pushing harder. And that's exactly what we did. That we made those those gains in the race. So that was the approach I wanted to take, and 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 we did it. Um, and then obviously going in with more experience in other tracks and stuff, the approach is gonna be different. But being the first race. Everybody knew and in the car and stuff and um, knew, you know, situation for me. I was like, let's just do a, a conservative approach mm. for this one. And physically, after the race, physically, what do you physically, think of the car? dude, I'm telling you, after warm-up, I was... It's hard. I was, I was worried, bro. I, it's I really hard. Was, I was very and worried. And it's not bad was, to admit it, too. Like, these cars are the hardest cars to drive, I no, think, in the world these cars are right the now. hardest cars. And after warm-up, I did, like, um, it was like a 12-lap consecutive push uh <laughs> spin and i was like holy yeah. i was like this race is getting tough dude a hundred <laughs> laps yeah <laughs> <laughs> and i was looking at some of the other drivers and i had a colin braun there with yep. me and i'd race with him in endurance and he's like damn dude how are you feeling for the race and I, I was just honest with them i said i don't you know dude yeah. we're gonna see when we go out and he was the same and uh well, yeah, I mean, he well. hasn't driven, he has not driven a car like that probably in a very long time when it comes to no power steering, nothing like that. It's crazy. Yeah. And Tom Blomqvist as well. Tom, I, I yeah. was speaking to him. I was racing with him a lot. Like we we're always competing each other closely in, in WEC last year. And I was like, so I was like, how do you, you know, what do you, how do you feel? And I was like, bro, just be honest. Like, you know, you know some guys try to, no lies. You know, like some guys try to yeah. hide it. They're yeah. Like, a bunch. He good, wasn't, bunch, he was honest. very honest. But like, it's, uh, it's going to be, I don't know how we're going to do it. But honestly, at the race, it, it ended up being easier than, than I expected. Because I think you get in a rhythm and. A lot of fuel saving too. A lot of fuel saving. That was part <laughs> of it too. And then when you're stuck in traffic as well, yeah. like sometimes in the beginning of the race, I would say more like on the second stint, I had better pace than the cars ahead, but there's no way to overtake. So you're not like pushing like this every lap and then you're just fuel saving. So you're kind of just managing. The tough one in like the warm up was because like you're pushing as Both, hard as yeah. you can every lap. So you wear yourself out. But if you're behind the other cars and there's not much to do until there's clean air, then it becomes a lot easier. So yeah. I was happily, I was. I was okay at the end. It was a good experience. I, I still think drivers acquire some sort of weird superhuman strength when it comes to race time. Because again, after the warm up, you're always like, how in the world are we going to do this? I know. And then you, you just, and once you're in the race, you're like, I know I'm here for two hours. And like, we got to let this thing eat the whole time. <laughs> I think it's because you know that. So you almost like hate yourself. In yeah. Way. I don't know what it is, but I, I was uh, after warm up. It's exactly what you said. I was like, I don't know how we're going to do a hundred laps here. <laughs> But it just ends up, you end up doing it somehow. 